How's it going, guys? Nathan from Nathan's MRE, and today we have something a little different. We are going to be cooking venison roast in the crock pot. So we're going to start off with, there's several different ways you can do this. There's many different options. We're going to start off with a two and a half pound roast. Now, we're going to want this to cook on high. Well, you can do it on high or low. On high, it's going to run about six hours. On low, just depends on the meat. This depends on your crock pot. It could go as much as 9 or 10 or even 11. Uh, it depends on your preference. So we're going to start off with, we're going to unpack this roast, and we're going to get in the crock pot. But first, the ingredients you're going to need is going to be some beef cooking stock. You can buy this in low sodium or regular. This is regular. You're going to need one box of this. This is a 32-ounce box. You're going to need a little bit of fresh lemon juice or squeezed lemon juice. Uh, we have a little bit of this Italian grinder. This has, I don't remember all the, all the Italian spices in it. I don't even remember what it had, to be honest with you. Uh, your Mars room, your, you know, all your Italian. You can buy several of these. These are McCormick. You can buy these at Walmart. This is going to depend on your taste. You don't have to have this, but it is good. It does give it a little bit extra flavor. Uh, we're also going to need a black pepper grinder, a salt grinder, and we have this stuff too. This stuff's pretty expensive. This is orange peel. You don't have to have this. I like to use this. This gives it a little bit of extra cut for the uh, the gamey taste on the deer meat. Uh, I'll give it a nice sprinkle on that. And then we have a very, the biggest must for this recipe. This is Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Um, we're going to be lightly covering the roast with that. And then we have some brown sugar. This is C&H. Uh, you can use any brand you want. It doesn't really make any difference. We'll be using a fairly good amount of that. So at that point, let's go ahead and get this guy unpacked. Let's get him in the crock pot, and we'll come back. Okay, so now before we start, there's a couple different options you have. You can do this with beef. I guess you could do it with pork. I really haven't tried with pork. Um, a lot of you won't have fresh venison. This is whitetail venison, so it is a very dry venison. Uh, we have almost all the silver skin cut off of it. Uh, we have pretty much all the fat cut off of it. Uh, that kind of stuff is going to flavor the meat if you leave a lot of fat and silver skin on a whitetail. So we're going to start off with a few things here. You have the option to brown this in a skillet on the stove. You also have the option to sear it on the barbecue. This particular one, we're not going to do that. I'm going to try to make this for supper. It's already 1.30 in the afternoon, so it needs to get going ASAP. So we're going to start off with a few things here. Start off with a little bit of lemon juice. And hopefully there's enough left in there. We're going to give it a little bit of sprinkle on top. Not a huge amount. And that's going to help cut the, uh, the gamey taste. So next, we're going to do our Worcestershire sauce. And this stuff just has a very unique smell. If you haven't cooked with this much before, uh, anything to do with beef or wild game, this is a godsend. We're going to take a Worcestershire sauce. We're going to just give it a good coating. And it's not going to make it salty like a lot of people think. And we're not going to overdo it with the salt, first of all. And at this point in time... We have something for all the spices to adhere to. We're going to take our Italian grinder. We're going to go ahead and pop off the top. And we're just going to grind on. I'm going to try to do it so you can see it. The top of this. I want a pretty fair amount on because it is a lot of meat. It's two and, well, roughly two and a half pound roast. So it's pretty big. This is a buck. They tend to be a lot tougher. Need a little more seasoning on it. All right. At that point in time, we're just going to dust it with our California lemon peel. If you guys go to buy this, it's kind of hard to find, and it's grotesquely expensive. This is around $8 for this little jar of it. We're going to go ahead and just make sure I got you in the shot good here. Give it just a light dusting. It's like that. We're going to go ahead and do our salt. 
We have, we'll go ahead and set it on medium. This is a three stage, we'll set it on medium grind. We'll go ahead and give her a good grind. And that's it, not too much. You can always add some later if you want it. And our black pepper. Black pepper is the same way. These are just McCormick grinders from Walmart. You could use anything you like. You could even use a pepper medley. Gives a little more flavor. This is just black pepper. Set on the medium grind. We're going to go ahead and give it a pretty fair amount here. Okay. And then the very last thing we're going to do is take our brown sugar and we're going to create a nice pack on top of this. This will also help tenderize it along with the Worcestershire and the lemon juice to cut the uh, the gamey taste. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. We don't want too much, but we want to have a good healthy dose on top of it. And you got to remember, we're going to put this beef stock in it, so it is going to cut down on some of the sweetness. It's going to put a lot of liquid in it. So we're going to go ahead and put the beef stock in. This is just some stuff I got at Walmart too. It's a Swanson 32 ounce box. You can use whatever you like. You could, you could even use a bouillon cube and mix that up. So what we're going to do with this guy, at this point in time you have a couple options here. Now you could put this in the refrigerator and, sorry, hit the mic, hit the tripod there. Uh, you can let this sit for up to one hour or even up to three hours and let all that marinate in there. Like I said, we're in a hurry today. We're not going to do that. You don't have to do that. It might possibly give you a little more flavor if you do that and tender it up a little bit. But the crock pot being tender isn't really a concern. So we're going to go and take our beef stock. We're going to pour it in, but we're not going to pour it on top of the roast. We're going to pour it in on the side. And that will leave the top of the roast covered with the brown sugar. Just pour on both sides, make sure it's all surrounded good. And we're not going to leave this roast whole during the whole cooking process. And that's a trick to making it not dry. So we're going to go ahead and there's a whole box. We're going to leave it cook. We're probably going to start off at five hours. We're going to come back with a fork after it's cooked for five hours on high. And we're going to stick it and see if it's getting tender. Now the trick of this is, once it's getting tender, once you can stick it with the fork easily, we're going to go ahead and pull it out. We're going to put it on a platter, and we're going to cut it up into a lot smaller pieces. We're going to put it back in the broth, and that's going to keep it from getting dry. All right, guys, so we're back. It's about, let me see here, not quite five hours later, but four hours and 50 minutes later. So let's go ahead and open her up and see what we got here. Looks pretty good. Let's set that lid down. We're just going to take a knife, you can take a fork, and we're going to stick it. It's getting pretty tender. It's not crazy tender yet. So we're going to go ahead and pull this thing out of here. i move a couple things around here so we can do that. And we have a platter. We're going to go ahead and pull this thing out with a pair of tongs. And we're going to put it up on our platter. And what we're going to do, we're going to slice it up. Now once we slice it up, it's going to finish cooking really quick. So let me get this crock pot out of the way and we'll get it done. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and slice her up. And you want to cut it up pretty thin. You don't want it too Two big of chunks is going to make it dry. And we're going to try to go against the grain. So we're going to go in here first of all. I should have grabbed a fork instead of these tongs maybe. And we're just going to cut it up. You can see it's still kind of tough on the bottom side. That doesn't matter. Once we cut this up, it's going to cook real quick. And if you don't cut it up, what I found out is that it makes it really dry. Even though it's cooking in, in juice. It doesn't matter. And you can do it about an inch thick. Something like that. We'll probably go through and 
cut it in half like that. All right. And you can see the nice brown sugar and spices have kind of like a, almost like a crust on top of it. And it smells really good. At this point in time, it doesn't smell like deer anymore. It smells like, almost like beef is up cleaner. And this is a pretty crucial stage in it. If you don't do this, it's not going to be good. A lot of guys don't understand that deer doesn't have hardly any fat on it. And the fat that does come on it, you can't really, you can't really use it because it has such a strong taste. And I see guys cut up venison and leave a lot of the silver skin on it. And they always complain about how strong it tastes. So there's the venison all cut up. We want to put the lid back on the crock pot so it stays warm while we're doing Sorry this. Sorry guys. I knocked the tripod over. Anyway, here's our venison going back in. You can see it has a nice color to it. And it is done at this point, but it needs to tenderize up. So we're going to go ahead and drop it all back in. At this point in time, 100% of it is going to be under the liquid in the crock pot what we're going to go for here is we're going to leave it in for about another hour maybe a little longer just depends on on how it's working out and we want it to be tender enough where you can take it with a plastic fork and stick it and you're going to be able to easily break it apart and eat it so let's go ahead and put the lid back on it and we'll be back in about an hour or hour and a half Hey guys, we're back. Hopefully you can hear me a little better. I greatly apologize for the sound quality in the first part of this video. We tried a different lapel microphone. It just echoed so bad and the quality is so bad. Um, last time I used that mic, it worked pretty good. This time it did not. So anyway, getting that out of the way, go and check it out. It's been about another hour and 15 minutes and Getting pretty tender. You can see on the bottom there's a lot of stuff coming up. It's starting to break down nicely. We're going to go ahead and turn it off. We're not done with it quite yet. So let's go ahead and shut the crock pot off. And what we're going to do at this point in time, you have a couple different options here. You could either thicken it up, as you can see how thin it's just, you know, the broth's like water. Uh, to thicken it up, we're going to use some cornstarch and mix it in a cup of hot water. And we're going to pour it in here. It's going to thicken it. Uh, we're also going to add a little bit of Country Bob's all-purpose sauce. And we have this right here. And this makes a really good taste at the very end of it. We'll put probably in that much. I don't know. We'll probably drizzle maybe, let's say, three or four tablespoons on it. And that should be sufficient. So let's go and get it thickened up. And we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back with the cornstarch we're going to use the Argo 100% uh, pure cornstarch and what we're going to do we're going to take a measuring cup we have roughly move this thing out of the way a little bit roughly a quarter of a cup of room temperature water we're going to use our plastic spoon last time I did this recipe it was took about four rounded over plastic spoonfuls not quite around but one two three and four so it's not going to be exact you're going to have to mix this to your own uh, preference and we'll mix it up it's kind of clumpy at first and it'll basically look like milk when you're done I'll go ahead and mix it up like that. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this guy back up. Turn the warmer on so it'll be super warm. And 
we'll let it heat a little bit. There should be enough heat in it now to thicken it up. You can't do it when it's cold, it just won't thicken. Okay, so now we're all mixed up good. We're gonna pull the lid. And it's definitely, uh, definitely still hot enough. And we're going to set that over there. And then we're just gonna pour it in all around. And what this is gonna do, this is going to thicken it up so you have a nice hearty gravy. All right, that's good. And we'll take, probably won't use a plastic spoon, it's still pretty hot. We'll take this guy and we'll just kind of mix it up a little bit and make sure it's all mixed around. And you might have to add a little more, a little less, depends on how you like it. And we'll go ahead and take our Country Bob's. Country Bob's is getting kind of low on this one. And we'll just kind of give her a good pour in here. You just want a few tablespoons in it. Nothing real super extreme. And you could also adjust that by flavor. And this is going to give it a really good deep flavor. If you haven't used that stuff, definitely check it out. And we're going to give it a little stir here. You see it thicken it up a little bit. And we're basically just going to set the lid back on it. We'll give it five or ten minutes on the warm cycle and come back. Okay, so it's been, I don't know, a good five minutes, it's all warm, and it's starting to get thickened up pretty decent, and we're gonna go ahead and turn the crock pot off, and we're going to get it plated up, and we'll be right back. All right guys, so here's the finished product. Now we did have to end up adding uh, about two more teaspoons of the thickener, of the starch. Uh, so I did that, and we have a little side of mashed potatoes here, we have some Chinese cabbage with some Thousand Island dressing to top it off. And let me grab my knife here. And we'll see if we even need the knife first. How about that? Let's go ahead and cut into it. We do not. And you can see it's nice and moist. No issues whatsoever. It smells amazing. We'll dip a little bit of gravy and try it out. Tastes absolutely delicious. Very good. We did a lot of tendon cutting out. You're never going to get all the tendons and all the stuff out of it. You get 90% of it out though. And, you know, what a great recipe. Uh, never had issue doing this. There is many variations of this you can do. This is how I like to eat it. Been eating like this my whole entire life. And hopefully you guys try the recipe and enjoy it. But that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching.